My name is my name's Kean. I'm just here following up on a lead that we got. Um, I'm a reporter from Calgary. Are you now? Yeah. No. We're looking for an individual named Othman yeah, Hamden. Yeah, for the past week, I've embedded myself in Enderby, British Columbia. It's a small town of less than 3,000 people, and most folks have lived here for generations. Generation after generation have fought in pretty much every war that Canada has ever been a part of. The same can't be said for Enderby's newest resident. Othman Hamden is a Jordanian ISIS supporter and jihad instructor. You can't get more of an antithesis to the community here than that. How did he get here, and who is he staying with? What does he even look like, and why of all places was Enderby? turned into the sacrifice community where our senseless judicial system dumped this terrorist supporter. Othman Hamden is his name and I'll let Justice Harrington of a Vancouver court tell you who he is. He says that Hamden is an unmitigated liar and it's hard to believe that he's ever said a word of truth since he came to Canada in 2002. A series of spectacular failures in our justice system released this menace onto this quiet community and no one seemed to care. I care and I came out here to expose Othman Hamden to find out where he is being hidden, who is hiding him, and even just what he looks like so this terrified community can know who this predator is and maybe cope with the stress of living with an ISIS sympathizer dumped in their midst. Our rebel team helped piece together the clues and we painstakingly uncovered what the courts have been trying to keep hidden. I talk to the owner of the mountain compound where he's holed up and I speak to the mayor about how this community is handling this scandal. I'm Kean Bexty and you're watching The Counter Signal. First, we need some background. Who is Othman Hamden and why is he even in Canada in the first place? Hamden came to Canada originally as a refugee, or so he said. He claimed to be a recent convert to Christianity and as such would face persecution if he was returned home to his home state of Jordan. He was led into Canada and the Canadian government's insatiable savior complex itch was scratched for a moment and all was well until it wasn't. Rather immediately Hamden took to Facebook creating many pages which all shared ISIS propaganda and calls for violence against infidels and the West. Who would have thought? A radical Muslim lying in the name of Allah. It can't be. He said he was Christian. How could he have been lying? Well, charges were promptly brought to court. He lied on his refugee application and there was that small detail of him being an international drug smuggler. But it didn't take long for our ultra-liberal immigration courts to let Hamden off the hook. How is the community reacting? Uh, I mean, everyone's kind of in shock. Like, especially like having a child too. It's just... It's scary, actually. Oh, of course you're concerned. Why, why wouldn't you? It makes me feel very uncomfortable. No, no one knows what he knows. We just have word that he's coming here and we didn't have a choice. Everyone's in awe and in shock about this whole situation. A few people have talked about it on their, our little website that we have, but no one really knows for sure where he is. Why just deport him right away? Like, put him back into his own country right away instead of just kind of keeping him here? For right now, I just, I just don't understand it. Besides lying to get into Canada, Hamden was also charged with four counts relating to terrorism, including instructing others to commit acts of terror. Via an array of social media accounts, Hamden instructed Islamic lone wolves to murder enemies of the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, why am I standing here at this dam just east of Enderby? Well, terrorist musings shared by Hamden related to the destruction of this very dam. He shared a post saying, quote, Damn near Revelstoke, security is weak. That is in no uncertain terms a threat to our national security. Another target was the Nipigon River Bridge. He also praised the death of Corporal Nathan Cirillo and the attack on the halls of Parliament. It's important to note that this first target, this dam, is a 3,000 megawatt impoundment dam, a 500 foot concrete structure holding back a three billion liter reservoir. Unbelievably, the courts have set Hamden free and allowed him to live unsupervised throughout the day by any police or even an electronic ankle monitor while he's now living just 80 minutes away from this critical piece of infrastructure. What do you have to say to the family who's allowed him to come into this community? Thanks a lot. Just why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know? Why take, why take it? Yeah. And why 
why do this? <laughs> I don't, I just, I don't understand it, honestly. What do you have to say to them? Do you think they've betrayed the community? Uh, yeah, I don't think that they should be doing that. It's just, it's just wrong, you know. Uh, we, we're, we're just not told enough about what's happening. It makes me think about their morals. They should at least form people about it first. They're, you know, is this guy take action if the guy does something wrong? The conditions are pretty lax. Do you think that they're appropriate? No, it's his friend who's doing this, right? Like, he could easily get away going on the internet, you know, easily be doing all these things, breaking all of his probations. Like, it's very easy for him to slip right back into doing things. The oral judgment of Hamden's acquittal is lengthy, and there are several reasons why a Justice Butler decided to release Othman Hamden, despite the fact that he posted to Facebook, quote, Islamic State, I am one of them, and that, quote, we are here to stay, kill the sheep, burn the cadavers, we will work towards the elimination of the morons, and finally, quote, we don't deny the Holocaust, we're just going to make you wish for it. The first reason, well, you're not going to believe this, the prosecutor didn't consider emoticons emoticons. You know, those little smiley faces at the end of sentences. The Crown Prosecutor against Hamden relied on the expertise of a Constable Tarek Mokdad, a quote, qualified expert in Islamist-inspired terrorism, including Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Constable Mokdad is as much of an expert on Islamic terror as you can find. He has a Bachelor of Arts focusing on the three monotheistic religions and 15 years of personal study on Sunni Muslim extremism. He sources, downloads, and archives a vast library of over 1,800 Islamic factions, and Constable Mokdad asserted that the posts by Hamdan were undoubtedly evidence of his intent to support, disseminate, and instruct terrorist plots, most notably at this dam. Do you think the court has failed Enderbeans? Of course they have. They've failed every Canadian, as far as I'm concerned. Of course they have. They've, they've failed a lot of us. We have a lot of crime going on around here right now, and they just seem to pick them up and go through the system and send them right back out the door again. Do you think that the courts have failed the people of Enderby and, and Canadians broadly? Yes, totally. Yes, this, this shouldn't be allowed. The judicial system is wrong, you know, it needs to be corrected. It seems for some reason Enderby lately has been getting a lot of uh, a bad rap and seem to have these characters that no one really cares about and the court system sure in hell doesn't. I think that if you come to this country and it's proven that you are going to um, harm it, you should be asked to leave. The judge, however, rejected this assertion. Justice Butler said this constable had a, quote, narrow focus that, quote, caused him to interpret language and comments in a way that was consistent with his views of Sunni Islamist extremists without considering alternatives. The constable's supposed narrow focus was denied by the judge, and you're not going to believe this. He said the officer not considering the implications of emoticons was damning. In particular, this is referring to this post, which applauds, quote, lone wolves hitting you in the heart of your lands. That post ends with a smiley face emoticon. I wonder what it could have meant. The judge says, quote, the emoticons appear to have been used to indicate sarcasm, satire, humor, etc. Just a reminder of his post, does this look like sarcasm, satire, and humor to you? This right here, folks, is the absolute state of the Canadian court system. It is working against folks like you and me to help folks like Othman Hamden. Hamden was acquitted, but was immediately rearrested by the Canadian Border Services Agency. They said Hamden posed a, quote, danger to the security of Canada. Now that's pretty damning. To the credit of the government, they moved to have Hamden deported. The Minister of Immigration applied to strip Hamden of his refugee status because, well, A, he lied about being a Christian in the first place, which is a big no-no when you're applying for refugee status. You can't lie. But also, B, he was an international drug dealer. The Honorable Justice Harrington decided in no uncertain terms that Othman Hamden was, quote, an unmitigated liar. In fact, he went on to say, one must wonder if he has ever uttered one truthful word since he came to Canada in 2002. His refugee claim was accepted in 2004. The basis thereof was that he had converted to Christianity from Islam and that he faced a serious risk of persecution should he be returned to Jordan. Othman Hamden was thus stripped of his refugee status and was put on the long road of deportation. Unfortunately for Canadians, saying that road is long is an understatement. One lone court has deemed Hamden an unmitigated liar. 
It is abundantly clear that he's dangerous. It is clear that he hates infidels and anyone who doesn't accept Allah. Hamdan was detained in northern BC in Fort St. John awaiting a flight to Jordan. But waiting for years to be deported was just too much to ask of this poor Jordanian. After a series of court battles, Hamden's lawyers managed to have him released onto the unsuspecting victims of Enderby, British Columbia. See, Canada isn't a country where we punish bad people. We reward them. Sure, Justin Trudeau didn't award this particular Islamist a $10 million payout like he did with Omar Khadr, but the courts gave Othman Hamden something much more valuable, freedom to wander Canada in 19-hour stints. Of course, anyone not obstructed by the self-flagellating Canadian court system can read Hamden's Facebook activity and see him for what he is, a fox in the hen house. Judges, though, they see it differently. They sit in their gated communities, in their penthouses, in their seaside estates, and regular Canadians must face the consequences. Right now, it is the people of Enderby, the seniors, the students, the loggers, the waitresses, the tourists, and the business owners who are now on the lookout for Othman Hamden. Local town halls are preoccupied with questions about how Enderby found itself in this situation, and I can't blame them. I spoke with locals to hear what they had to say. We published the face of child predators, we published the face of pretty much every criminal in the book. Their, their mug shots are publicly accessible, but for some reason this ISIS supporter who's been in and out of prison and is now released onto the people of Enderby, or do you think the courts should be publishing this face so that folks here know what he looks like? Absolutely. Nobody knows what he looks like. Do you think that that's fair to the community? No, I don't think so at all. Oh, it does not make sense at all. No. We should be able to see who among us is not living up to the standards as you should. We should be the ones that are the watchdogs. Well, we should know who he is. If he's a predator, if he's a risk, if he's a terrorist or anything, we should have the right to know that. Do you deserve to know what this ISIS sympathizer looks like? Absolutely. I think we should definitely know what he looks like. If he's going to be like in our community, if he's going to be around here and around families and, you know, like I definitely think we should see at least what he looks like. I want to know who he is. Because if we don't know who he is, then we don't know what he's doing. You know, and being so close to Revelstoke, and that was one of his, his targets or whatever, why would you send him so close there for? That's, that's like putting a, a child predator next door to the person that you victimized. When we find this guy, and I, I'm fairly certain that we will, we're on his trail, should we publish his face? Or are we stepping over any lines if we did that? Absolutely not, no. They've posted like so many ISIS terrorists over the years on TV, national TV. So I don't think, like, I think they should definitely show his face. Would the, would the community be relieved to see what he looks like so they can be on guard? I think so, yes. For some reason, the courts and the police have done their level best to keep pictures of Hamden and the name of his bonds person, the man who he's living with, under wraps. But as the government tends to do, they don't do a great job. The bonds person's name was blacked out of the condition document, and every time Hamden has been transported by police, they have let him cover his face with a shirt or papers. This is the person the good folks of Enderby are on the lookout for. All they know is that he's brown skinned, he's ever so slightly overweight, oh, and he supports ISIS. Not much to go on. And frankly, I feel sorry for every tan skinned man in this town who is undoubtedly getting sideways glances. The system has been set against Enderbeans, and that's where I come in. Perhaps the most concerning part of Othman Hamden's case is not only that the judge called him an unmitigated liar, Hamden has said it himself. This is straight out of the court proceedings and evidence that was compiled from his Facebook pages. He said this, quote, Wolves are one of the first stages of jihadist work and operate without connection. They link towards a common goal, the one goal of establishing the law of God on earth. He emphasizes that a lone wolf must be discreet so that others are not able to recognize him. According to the author, a lone wolf may, quote, during the day be an accountant in a company and at night slaughtering and stalking the dogs of disbelief. The author then goes on to describe in detail how a lone wolf can kill non-believers and recommends weapons, knives, guns with silencers, poison and vehicles for running people over. He then describes methods of transportation to escape after killing. He also gives advice on the clothing for a lone wolf to wear to avoid detection. Does that sound familiar? Finally, he reminds lone wolves to keep their actions a secret from all.
Othman Hamden actively avoids detection. We know that. And he's really good at doing so. As of this moment, he has been roaming the Okanagan Valley, going about his business. And until now, nobody even knew what he looked like. He's been going around for seven days like this. Hamden was released by the courts, but he has a list of 25 conditions he must abide by. Most of them are meaningless and unenforceable. For example, he's not allowed to drive. Well, unless his bonds person says he can. Another condition says he can't have a phone, but the next one says, oh, but if you do have a phone, here is the rules. He can leave the house at 5 a.m., and he has 19 hours of freedom before a midnight curfew. Just a note, it takes a little over an hour for one to make his way from where he's holed up to the Revelstoke Dam. I spoke with the mayor of this small town of Enderby, and here's what he had to say about the conditions. Othman Hamden has been released from custody and it's said that he's residing in Enderby with a bonds person. Uh, it's $2,000 bond that's being posted. Do you think that the conditions that Othman Hamden is subjected to fit, you know, his, his previous threats, especially against the Revelstoke Dam? You know, some of them are good. There's 25 of them. Um, you know, I think the frustrating part is I think, uh, I think the judge should have considered more the the experts and the people that are that are in the know, um, the people that have monitored and whatever. Sure, he wasn't convicted of certain charges, but I'm, I think his intentions are are obvious. And so, you know, it's unfortunate that you know after declining month after month after month of release opportunities, it just took a simple two thousand dollar bond posted by a friend to to allow him out. So, so that's a bit frustrating. And as for the twenty five points, you know, there's some of them are really really good. I'd say about a third of them. A third of them are kind of, you know, kind of wishy-washy, like he can't have a cell phone, but if he does have one, here's the backup plan. Well, wait a minute, can he have one or can't he have one? So, and then I think the last few were just were thrown in there. So I think for a community, it's, it's just frustrating that, uh, you know, we're, we're a small community. We typically always struggle to try to get services, whether it's from, you know, law enforcement, whether it's uh, health care, whether it's whatever, we just... You know, I, I mean, we have to constantly work with them. Do I believe the RCMP will do a great job? Absolutely. You know, I'm, that is probably my least of my worries is I know they'll be all over it. But again, it just, it'd be nice if the, the court at the time would have said, hey, you know what? Yeah, we've got a person willing to post a bond. Let's contact the community and just see what it, how it would be. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. What have you been hearing from the community? Are they concerned? Um, you know, the, the first, uh, the first three, I, I must have received probably 300 emails and phone calls. Uh, it was hysteria at first. Uh, how can this happen? How are we going to do it? What are we going to do? Um, I think people are calming down now that they've had a time to think about it and, and understand that, you know, yeah, there is conditions and there's... So, you know, um, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. You know, it's just, it's we're kind of in limbo. You know, the calls now are, what's he look like? What's he look like? I'm like, well, the moment somebody wants us to know what he looks like, we'll, we'll know. And if they don't want us to know, we won't know. By this point, I was fairly certain that Richard Provost was the bonds person. After receiving a tip from a local, I decided to give his grandmother and landlord a call. If Hamden was living with Prevost, surely she would know. Here's my conversation with Cora. You, you've met Adam. I've met Hamden. Oh, ha oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And w what do you think about? What do you think about that? What do you think about? Well, I, I would like to talk to him about Othman. About what? About Hamden. Yeah, right. And I said I met him, so I knew that you, that's why you were phoning. Oh, uh, okay. What, what do you think about the fact that Hamden is living in Enderby? It's great. He's in my house. Oh. He, he's not living with Richard. Yes, he's living with Richard. Richard Richard's my grandson, and oh. Richard rents my house. Oh, okay. And are you at all concerned? Not in the least. Not in the least. Um, I met him. I like him. I do not think that there's any, even a chance of a threat. So I am very, very comfortable with it. But you should speak to Rick, and you should talk to, to, to Adam himself. Adam. He's very open. He's very, um, very straightforward, very articulate. By Adam, you mean Othman Hamden? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Does he go by Adam? He goes by Adam. Oh, okay. Um, do, you're aware that he was threatening to blow up the Revelstoke Dam. He he was never threatening to blow up the 
Donald Trump Dam, and where you got that information from. If you can read all through the court documents, you'll find that a lot of stuff was taken out of context. He was totally cleared of all charges. There was no, um, there's no, anyway, I'm not going to go into it with you because sure. I, I am, you know, I talked to him yesterday in great lengths. I know he's no threat, and I know he has never had a brush with the law. He's never had any illegal dealings. He's never had, you know, he's never shown any signs of being at all abrasive or um, a threat to anybody. Why did so, the Minister of Immigration say that Othman Hamden was an international drug dealer and, and the Canadian border security agency said that Hamden was a threat to the security of Canada. Do you think that the judgment that you're making... Well, you talked to the judge that said that stuff is all bullshit. It is all stuff that was totally taken out of context. That, you know, the judge would not have dropped all charges and, and found him not guilty of all charges if he didn't see through all of that stuff. Well, another judge, stuff was another taken judge out of said... Context. Like, I don't know. I can't argue with those things. You would have to talk to Adam himself, and you'd have to talk to Richard. They know way more than I do. Sure. Uh, another judge did say that Othman Hamden was an unmitigated liar. Um, uh-huh. I'm sure they said a lot of things. If you look at the 17 people that actually um, gave testimony, three mm -hmm. of those people told the truth. The other 14 tried to cover the initial lies and initial wrongdoings of the first fellow that brought the charges against him. So, you know, you have to um, to wonder where where the information yeah. comes from and what is the right information. And you can read things any way you want to read them. Sure. Why, one, one last question, sorry. Why do you think someone like Othman Hamden, having posted so many things to Facebook, including, you know, saying that he wants another Holocaust to happen, uh, Target is saying that the security of Revelstoke Dam was weak, uh, and the Nipigon Bridge was weak as well. He praised the death of Corporal Nathan Cirillo and the attack on Parliament. I have no idea where you're getting the stuff in. I have no idea how to uh, talk about it. You would have to talk to Adam himself. I have no comment about that. Do, do you think that the people of Enderby deserve to know what Othman Hamden looks like? And should I don't sh think there's any threat. And I think they have better things to worry about, like the guys that are wandering around somebody's backyard in the middle of the night, than worry about what Adam is doing in the middle of the night. He is curfewed from midnight till 5 a.m. There's somebody that goes up and checks and makes sure he's sleeping in his bed every night. So I do not feel there's any risk whatsoever to anybody. Even so whether they have the right to know any more than they have the right to know who your grandmother is, I don't know. You know, I I can't answer those things for you. Are you aware of the Facebook posts that he made? I'm aware of the charges. I'm aware of the charges that were thrown out, and I'm aware of the charges that he was found not guilty of. So you can take your things out of context any way you want to take them, and you can interpret them any way you want to ter interpret them. But I, I really don't care. I've met him. I like him. I trust him. And he is no threat to you or I. Do you think he should be sent back to Jordan? He is waiting no. deportation. No. If he goes back to Jordan, he's going to die. It's just that easy. He's a landed immigrant. He was given status here of being in the country legally. And sending him back to Jordan is going to be sure death. It won't happen. And it shouldn't happen. Is he, is he a Christian or a Muslim? I don't know. Are you a Catholic or a Protestant? I don't give a damn what he is. I'm, what I'm a Protestant. What does it make? I'm a Protestant. It's just, he came and to I'm Canada. And I'm a Catholic. He came to you Canada. Know, I under... don't like Protestants. You don't like Catholics. I don't like Muslims. You don't like I whatever else. I really don't care what he is. He's I, got I mean, the right I, to believe I, I like what Muslims. he wants I don't know to about you, believe. But... We live in Canada. We have freedom of thought. We have freedom of speech, or we used to at one time. We're not threatening anybody. You're not threatening anybody by being a Protestant, are you? I mean, they haven't been always the best. Uh, anyway, let's not go into stupid things. Eh? Well, I, um, I'm just wondering, anyways, because when he came to Canada, to he said to Richard, he was a Christian. If you'd like to speak to Richard, 
give me your number and I will have him phone you. Unfortunately, I, obviously I can't give out, out my number to everyone. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. Do you, I'm sorry to hear that. Now, I'm a Protestant, but I certainly don't hate other religions. And that was a really, really weird conversation. But this is no regular family. Whether you believe Hamden is on Team ISIS or not, not many people would put up a soon-to-be-deported Jordanian in their own home. How has Hamden pulled the wool over the eyes of this family? I had to speak with him. When I got to his house, which turned out to be deep in the woods on top of a mountain overlooking the small town of Enderby, I could not believe my eyes. Hello? Hello? Hi. Would I be able to come up there? Would I be able to come up there? I'm just sorry, worried about the dogs. Oh, okay. Hey guys. Sorry? I'm, uh, sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is, my name's Kean. I'm just here following up on a lead that we got. Um, I'm a reporter from Calgary. Yeah. No, no, not interested. Not interested. No? Not interested. We're looking for an individual named Othman yeah, Hamden. I'm, I'm interested yeah. Do not use any of that. You're not allowed. You're not permitted to use any of that in anything, in any reporting or any whatever you want to. Um, it's nice to meet you, but you can go up and talk to me now. You can call Edelman okay, for and sure. Company. Sorry. You can call Edelman and Company. How could Edelman and Company? Can I get a number? You can. Say. Can you tell me? Have you visited the Revelstoke Dam at all? Get off the property. Okay, for sure. Right ha now. Have you been to Enderby right at all? Now. Okay, for sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Just to confirm, though, that you are Othman, right? No. He's not Othman Hamden? No. You can't confirm that. Get off the is this a public road here, or is this, is this is private? No. Okay. Othman, can you, can you confirm that's your name? Have a good day. Who will I be sued by? Have you visited the town of Enderby at all? Othman, do you have any access to Wi-Fi? Now, he wouldn't answer any questions, but one point that I want to reiterate is his answer to my one question. Have you been to the Revelstoke Dam? Look at his answer. Can you tell me, have you visited the Revelstoke Dam at all? Get off the property. Now, if you relied on the power of that dam, if you lived downstream of it, wouldn't you be a little concerned from that answer? What was more unbelievable was that this ISIS supporter, soon to be deported Jordanian, was holding Richard's fiance's child. What was going on there? They threatened to sue. They told me to leave and it being private property, I was obligated to comply. I'm not an ISIS terrorist. I follow the law. It's bizarre that a man who urged others to murder Canadian police was now telling me that he would call those same police. The encounter didn't last long, but I got what I came for. After staying hidden for years, arrest after arrest, court case after court case, we now know what Othman Hamden looks like, and we know where he is living. The people of Enderby are on edge, and they'll remain that way until Hamden is deported, or at least rearrested. As for our work here, I think it's completed. The rebel came here to expose Othman Hamden and those people that are holding him up holding the quaint community of Enderby, British Columbia hostage. At least now, hopefully, they can take comfort in that they have the information that their government tried so hard to keep quiet. For Rebel News, I'm Kean Bexty. 
this exclusive Rebel documentary would not have been possible without the help of Rebel donors. They helped keep me in Enderby for a week while I followed up on leads and eventually exposed Othman Hamden and the family holding Enderbyans hostage. Also, special thanks to the people of Enderby who helped me by giving me tips and advice and also uh, agreeing to street interviews, which really helped make this documentary what it was. Also, another huge thanks to the editors who put in many, many, many long hours to make this documentary look great. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to go to rebelnews.com where you can pitch in a few bucks to help our coverage so we can continue exposing the stories that the mainstream media outright refuses to talk about.